What if you could build the perfect city that optimizes everything from the natural world to carbon emissions? Saudi Arabia is trying to do just that with The Line, a 170 kilometer long city with no roads, no cars, and no carbon emissions. Every aspect of the city has been apparently thought through, but is it really a good idea? Will this city of 9 million residents and $500 billion worth of construction costs prove to be the future of urban living or simply a vanity project for the crown prince of Saudi Arabia? The line is located in Saudi Arabia, stretching from the Gulf of Aqaba 170 kilometers into the desert, through mountains and the upper valley. It will be 200 meters wide, giving it a footprint of just 34 square kilometers. The space will be taken up by two parallel skyscrapers with open space in the middle. The benefits of this are actually pretty reasonable. It gives everyone inside a two minute walk to uninterrupted nature views and access. They show a concept of what Manhattan in New York would look like in this form, and it is surprisingly compelling despite only being a render. The city is designed to make all of your daily needs within a five minute walk, drastically reducing the need for transportation. For your longer distance travel, you will have the option of cycling, autonomous and electric shuttles, and a high speed underground transit system, which would let you go through the entire city in just 20 minutes from end to end. All of this would supposedly be accomplished with no carbon emissions and 100% renewable energy. Although some of the information on the page is doubtful, strangely worded, or just plain not there. And the city is being funded mostly by oil money, so there is that trade-off where is it really carbon emission free if it's being funded by selling oil to the rest of the world? As with any of the Vision 2030 projects, there are some overly aspirational goals, such as urban air mobility from goal 3 of the website, a transportation method which is completely unexplained, and they show images of overly futuristic bikes, trains, and buses. In reality, I would expect these transport methods to look much like they do in every other city, if slightly more advanced. You don't need to reinvent the wheel, and in fact, it's probably better if you don't reinvent every aspect of day-to-day -day life. Speaking of the strange wording choices, the entire website is filled with empty buzzwords and promises. Take the education page, for example. What they supposedly describe as the future of education, the gnome culture is all about learning by doing, combining knowledge, creativity, and critical thinking with the latest technology and a digital mindset to solve the problems of tomorrow. At Gnome, we live and breed this culture by developing a bespoke learning ecosystem for all its citizens. In other words, we will have schools. As the average reader, I feel like this project would be a lot more believable if the plan was more clearly laid out with real information about the project rather than throwing a ton of futuristic verbiage at me. It makes the entire project feel like a concept art done by some overly ambitious marketing firm, rather than a realistic project. And that's the problem, because I would really love to see this succeed. Lowering carbon emissions and having more walkable cities is a great goal, and this seems like a really interesting and innovative way to do it. However, the way it is laid out just makes the line seem like a fantasy or possibly even a dystopia. But is it either of these things? Construction reportedly began in the first quarter of 2021 and was planned to be completed in 2025. It seems like that's not going to happen, but there are some promising signs. The Bay Airport is already open and working to bring in employees and investors, and some contracts have been awarded, including to a power and air products company in the US to develop the world's biggest green hydrogen and green ammonia plant so already trying to work on lowering carbon emissions. Bloomberg reports that there are already tens of thousands of construction workers on site, and around 2,000 white-collar employees who are currently living in temporary housing sites around the area. However, after so many years, there is still concerningly little progress. Workers have also told The Telegraph that the job is near impossible, and that the project has been plagued by overspending and few results. The entire Gnome project, of which the line is simply a part of, has been plagued with controversies. Much like with the other 2030 projects, people take issue with the Saudi Arabian regime and policy, showing these plans as the pet projects of an authoritarian leader with unchecked power and near infinite resources in the Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund. The project has also come under fire for its displacement of the Al Huaytat indigenous tribe, who have occupied land planned for use in Nome since the 16th century. Abdul Rahim Al Huwaiti, a resident of the area, posted a video online in April 2020 announcing that the Saudi security forces were attempting to evict his tribe from their homeland. 
The video was circulated by human rights organizations and activists, and Abdul was later killed by Saudi security forces after he failed to comply with their order to leave. The Saudis claim that he opened fire on them first, but human rights organizations have their doubts as to the facts of this story and the scale of the number of indigenous tribes and peoples who have been forced to relocate due to this project. This is only part of a long list of bad press that the Gnome and the Line have gotten. And unfortunately, much like many of the other Vision 2030 projects, the Line is not looking like it's really coming together. In a list of projects clouded with computer renders, how can we tell what is real and what is fake? I'm going to be covering all of these upcoming projects through all of their controversies and all of the things that come from them, and if they actually start to happen, on this channel. And we'll also be updating you on the line as more information becomes available. Subscribe if you want to see those videos in the future.